Hello everyone! Today we're gonna review the R100 USB wireless adapter from Big Big One. With this adapter you can pair other gaming controllers with your console. So let's do an unboxing. Here in the back of the box you'll see a compatibility list with all supported controllers. You also have a manual that is completely in English with instructions on how to pair with the different controllers and it is also translated to Japanese. You have an OTG cable which is gonna be used to connect to the switch light and other USB-C devices. And here you have the adapter. The construction seems okay. The plastic doesn't seem pretty strong, but it also doesn't feel cheap either. And unfortunately, it seems to be glued, so we can't open it to show the components without destroying it. To pair with the Nintendo Switch, simply plug it in the dock. It could be either port. And the light will start flashing, meaning it's looking for a controller to pair. Then grab your controller and put it into pairing mode. Here on the DualShock 4 you will see that the light will turn purple, meaning that it's paired. And now you're able to play Smash Brothers with a PlayStation controller. If you ever wonder how it would feel like to play Smash Brothers on a PlayStation console, this is the closest that you can get. I gotta say, it feels pretty weird. And here is it working with the Switch in handheld mode. This also applies to the Switch Lite by using the OTG Type-C adapter. The motion controls also works flawlessly, and a funny thing is that the capture button is assigned to the touchpad in the PlayStation. So all functions are available. Unfortunately, I don't have a Pro Controller to test on the PlayStation 4, so I tried pairing with the Elitist S which works on the Switch as a Pro Controller. And it should work, right? But I didn't have any response here. This is pretty weird because it's a controller from the same brand, so it's supposed to work with it. But sadly, it doesn't. Then I went and tried to pair with the PlayStation 3 console and noticed this weird bug where the controller is rumbling non-stop. And after checking the website for updates, I've seen that this is a known glitch, and it's already fixed with a firmware update. So you press the pair button while connecting it to a USB port of your computer, and the pairing light will remain lit, meaning it's entered update mode. Then it will show up as a storage device on your computer. You can then open it and drag the firmware update files inside. Once it's done copying, you're ready to go. And you can see now that the rumbling is gone. Then I did some tests by playing Soul Calibur 4. I didn't feel any lag or delay in my inputs. I was even able to do just inputs, like here and it overall feels like a PS3 controller. No problems here. You can also plug it in your computer and it will instantly recognize as a Xbox controller. This is very useful because if you're not playing on Steam, uh, some games doesn't support the DualShock 4, so you can easily connect and play anytime you want.
Then I got curious to test the lag. And by using the slow motion cameras on my smartphone, you can see that the lag is pretty much close to nothing. Well, this isn't the best way to test, but this is the closest that I got for activating the two buttons at once. And you can see that's pretty good overall. You can also connect it to your smartphone with the USB Type-C dongle. You can also use it on other Android devices like TV boxes or retro consoles. And why would you use the adapter instead of the Bluetooth connection? The adapter has a 2.4 GHz connection, which is way more stable and lagless than regular Bluetooth. While testing, I found this weird problem with the analog sticks. When making circular motions, it seems to skip diagonals. And this can be a problem for fighting games, where you need inputs to be very precise. And just for comparison, I'm gonna test with the Joy-Con. And the same thing doesn't happen here. All the inputs are registered smoothly and perfect. Then I booted up Street Fighter V to do some in-game testing. And you can see in the corner that the down forward diagonal is missing constantly. The move still comes out sometimes, but I'm missing many times. So I switched over to a wired connection and the down forward diagonal is being registered pretty much every time now. And just for the sake of comparison, I tried with the Elitist S in wireless mode and it's also fine. So I reached out for Big Big One and asked if they could fix this with a firmware update. Unfortunately, it wasn't possible, and this is a permanent flaw. Aside from that, the adapter works pretty great, with the pros being that it supports multiple controllers, has low latency, it's easy to use, and has upgradable firmware. The cons is that it doesn't support Xbox consoles, and it doesn't have supports with the Elitist S controller or other third-party controllers, and this issue with the circular motions on the analog stick. If you got interested and wanna buy this adapter, I'm leaving a link in the description and you can buy it directly from Big Big One. Thanks a lot for watching and stay tuned for the next video.